is keeping well, the KC are incredibly excited to bring back our employability forum for yet another year and we hope you are just as excited. We have a really great lineup of businesses this year from a diverse set of industries, so keep an eye out as you might see yourself fitting in nicely at one of them. The Employability Forum is a space where both the employer and the student can come together for a similar purpose. It's an event that encourages opportunity, ambition and interaction. If you can take even one thing from this event, I hope you'll be feeling motivated to go grab your career with both hands. Coming up, we have some words from our directors. We will then move into our employer introductions. Following on from that, we'll have a student Q&A session. We will then gain a deeper insight into our students' places of work. Then we'll have a chat with you about some of the things that KC does. And then we'll finish with a few closing words. I think that leads me nicely into our first portion of today's event, a few words from our directors. Hello everyone, dear my esteemed colleagues, student friends, and our valuable employer partners. I'm exceptionally pleased to be a part of this employability forum. This is probably the KEC's flagship event. Like every year, in this year, I'm delighted to learn that we have a stellar line of employers. And in this forum, we have managed to bring together staff, students, along with the employers, so that we can engage with each other, learn from each other, so that our students get opportunities to ask questions, learn from the wisdoms, and, and, and share their life stories. So before I, uh, of course, welcome you all, I wish to say a few words, thanking to each of you, thanking to each of our stakeholders. And firstly, as a student century college, uh, I'm sure you will welcome the employers first. I wish to express on behalf of our students and the college, our sincere appreciation and thanks to our employer partners. Thank you for being so deeply passionate about supporting our students, helping them to navigate career challenges, encouraging them to effectively make a difference in life, do good, have a positive impact in not only in their life, but to the society as a whole. Secondly, I wish to thank our adult students helping us, you helping us, to remain steadfast in our commitment to support you so that our career-minded adult students can maintain, renew, update their knowledge and competencies, and then apply the theories and the models, the frameworks that you learn in the classrooms to your own life and career. I sincerely hope you can use these as an educational opportunity so that we are all prepared for the societal and working life challenges and become more confident in embracing changes so that we can reap the benefits the world throw us. Thirdly, I wish to thank our educators our lecturers, our staff, who help our students to believe that, that the topics our students study have direct and powerful relevance to our students' own life and career. I particularly thank you all for taking time, not only in designing, but delivering curriculum that fully equip our students to deal with a wide range of life problems that they encounter, as well as helping them to acquire skills and competencies that they need to succeed, not only economically, 
but personally in, in the society. Fourthly, I wish to thank our general public. We are here to make an impact to our society and our country. Our country and our future generation need us to make it better for everyone. For example, we have a lot of challenges. One such challenge has been highlighted by a report recently published in 2020 by the OECD. They commented that the world of work is changing because of multiple forces, digitization, globalization, and aging population. So in order to reap the rewards from these changes, the society need to depend critically on the readiness of our adult students and also adult learning systems so that our adults can develop and maintain relevant skills over their working life. So I thank you. I thank you for supporting, supporting us. Thank you, general public, for supporting us. I want to assure you that we, we are working tirelessly to support our students so that they can make a strong and long lasting socio-economic impact to our society. Lastly, I want to thank Kashka, Bruce, Chris, and all colleagues for doing incredibly hard work. Your hard work, I'm sure will pay off. I'm sure our students, employer partners, and we all will work together so that the employability forum becomes a success. Now, without further ado, I wish to say that we are all eagerly waiting to hear the exciting tips from our employers, the hostess mouths. I, I hope to uh, learn from you and illuminated by your thoughts and wisdom. Thank you again. Thank you to everyone for taking your time, valuable time, and to share your wisdom, thoughts, and, and, and supporting us. Thank you very, very much. Bye-bye. My name is Shiraz Islam. I am a director at Nelson College. Although it sounds all fancy being a director, I do have a job as well in Nelson College. I am the head of marketing and recruitment. So what that means is I am in charge of trying to uh, meet our numbers when it comes to recruitment. So every year we have a number that's given to us, for example, let's say 500. Uh, my job is to make sure that my team meet the uh, target and they're able to recruit that number of students at the college once. Uh, so that's my job there. Uh, behind the scenes as a director, we have uh, lots of meetings that we hold with the other directors, the board of governors, the principal. There's a whole load of other things that go on in the background in relation to the college. I've come from, uh, I think with all the directors that work at Nelson College, uh, most of the senior managers that also work at Nelson College, have come from humble beginnings. Um, we have, a, a, because of the humble beginning, we have, we are able to uh, relate to our students quite well. Uh, we know that a lot of our students have come from backgrounds that um, are not so privileged. And we're able to relate to them, I think, because uh, we've had similar upbringings ourselves. Um, I think the reason why Nelson College is doing so well is because of uh, the fact that our customer service uh, that we provide to our students is is exactly what they're looking for, if that makes any sense. So our, our students require a certain attention and we're able to give that attention to them. Anybody who works in Nelson College uh, in admin, uh, typically trained by uh, myself or another team member. And what we do is we train them on providing a customer service experience for the students that will please them and keep them in, engaged and be able to allow them to ask us questions should they feel need, should, should the need arise without being uncomfortable. We, were, we had a meeting the other day and the principal was talking to a gentleman from a head of a charity and our principal also mentioned that he was from uh, an area which was deprived. He 
a struggle to go through uh, the, the, the rigors of life, then go into university and then come up with so many qualifications that he has and today being the principal of Nelson College. I think that also applies to a lot of the directors. The head of London Met University has a HND. Myself, I didn't do A levels, I did HND as well. The other directors I know also, although one of them has an accounting background, the other one also has a HND uh, element to his education. So uh, what we do is effectively a repeat of how we grew up uh, going through education, finding it difficult to educate ourselves, but at the same time, later on in life, realizing the only way that you can get somewhere faster rather than having to work so hard is to really have some education under your belt. I didn't know which direction I should go, you know, so you want to open a business or you want to get a job. What do you do? Where do you go? Um, I think networking with people, even if it's your neighbours, your old school friends, people have ideas. And I realised once I had an idea that I wanted to go into training, into education. Obviously, Nelson College wasn't this Nelson College 10 years ago. When we opened up in 2012, it was a much smaller provider. and. Um, we had a different ambition and different intention for Nelson College, hoping that we could probably have two classrooms of students. In fact, we have now two buildings full of students, but at that time we were thinking two classrooms of students would be sufficient. We could run a, a, a little operation. We could potentially be able to communicate with our students through our experiences. And so we started off Nelson College that, at that size, and we wondered, how do we do the legality side of running a business? Uh, as you get into running a business, you realize there's a couple of things you really need. You need a good lawyer, a good solicitor, and you need an accountant. If you have just those two guys in your life, and it's easy to find an accountant and easy to find a solicitor, uh, once you have these two people in your life and they're working with you, they don't charge you for the work that you do by the hour, effectively they charge you for the work that has been done. So you can say, oh, how can I afford a lawyer? How can I afford a solicitor? How can I afford an accountant? They don't really charge you anything at the beginning. They charge you once you've made your money. So yeah. a lot of people don't know that. And I think it's important to know that you can always open up a friendship relationship with your accountant and your solicitor. And then fees and charges come afterwards. They might even have an arrangement with you where they won't charge you if you don't make any money. So this is how we got into opening up a business. At first, I thought, wow, it's going to be hard work. And it was hard work because obviously you had to bring in the customers. But in relation to running a business in the United Kingdom, they make it easy for businesses to run, providing you run it properly. Um, they make it easy for you to run a business. Hence the reason why so many people have businesses. Uh, well, that's all I can say really on the note of yeah, uh, being motivated, driven and I think having a dream having, a, having dreams uh, is very important, you need to be able to dream because if you don't have the dreams you're never going to be able to do the action so dream of so many things there's no point opening a business if it's solely just to make money I tell you why, obviously we all want to make money but if you're doing something day in day out and all you want is just the money at the end of it but you hate doing what you do then you're not enjoying the journey. So the, the pursuit to happiness is effectively doing something that you enjoy and at the same time make an income. So for example, our students, I see a lot of myself, a lot of the other directors, a lot of the board of governors, a lot of the senior managers in our students. Now, these students have come from many different backgrounds, you know, some good, some bad, some worse, some not so worse, some excellent, some not so excellent. And these guys have come in and they've said to themselves, said to themselves, how can I commit three years of my life to education? And before they enroll in the course, they'll talk to one of us and we'll tell them the benefits of it, the benefits of having education under your belt, the potential potentials of getting a job, going into employment. We, we talk to them about all of these things and those who stick it out, and the majority of them do, they stick it out. I keep in touch with them because I ask them to do an exit survey once they've left the college. So they've come in and we've done an entrance survey and we've measured them at certain levels of life that they are, they are at now. And then we measure them at the end and we can see that they've gained many, many types of experiences. 
whether it's academic experience or practical experience, they've gained it. And then we want to see if we can get them into work. And I have seen students who have been able to get themselves after a de degree into very well-paid jobs. Yeah. Now, I've spoken to them. I keep in touch with a lot of our students by email, by phone calls, by text messages. And they've said, you are right, it does change our lives. And it, and, it, and it has to change your life. There's no point you studying and gaining all this work experience if you're going to be in the same job. It will definitely, I can, you know, give you 100% assurance that it will definitely give you better prospects in life. That I can almost say with 100% guarantee. Thank you, Shiraz. Thank you, Nazim. Now, let's meet some people without whom this event simply could not happen. Our employers. First up, it's my pleasure to introduce Elizabeth Edwards, who is the business owner of The Cake Studio. Hello, my name is Beth. Um, as Chris said, I own The Cake Studio, which is a cake shop in Sedgefield, which is in the northeast of England. Uh, we do celebration cakes to order, um, as well as we've got a counter of fresh cakes for people to come in and uh, take away. And um, we've been, the shop's been open since December, so we're quite a new business. Thank you, Elizabeth. I would now like to introduce Sylvia Comey, who is the business owner at CBR Clinics. So um, I'm from uh, Italy, uh, close to Milan, and uh, I did my bachelor degree there. I studied five years and uh, I got the, my registration. I, I basically converted my degree here in uh, six months, and then I started to work as an osteopath. Uh, self-employed. I'm self-employed since uh, eight years now. <laughs> and... Thanks Sylvia. Now one of our local business partners. It is my pleasure to introduce Amir Ijaz of Ajwa Sweets and Bakers. Hi everyone, uh, my name is Ijaz Ahmed and I'm the owner of the business Ajwa Sweets and Bakers which is based in Gansil, Ilford uh, and uh, we are basically doing all the sweets and bakery products. Actually, biggest achievement I opened a business uh, actually literally one year before we started this one uh, to start working on this idea that we should open a sweets and bakery shop because in this area there was not uh, a sweets and bakery shop. So we we started with this idea and it took us it, uh, exactly one year to dream come true actually. And uh, in this period of time. We have gone through from so many hardships, so many difficulties, but at the end of the day, uh, we open the shop, and uh, uh, just like a, it's, it's like a teamwork uh, with my wife, with my with my colleagues, and it's a teamwork like a dream work. So motivation was like that one to open a new business, uh, to become an, an entrepreneur, a successful entrepreneur. This is the first shop we open, and there's a plan for the second and the third as well. So the biggest motivation when I open in the morning show, as soon as the shutter lift up, so much excitement, okay, new day, new, new something, learning new, dealing with the new customers, and uh, enjoy my work. This is my, the more motivation. That was great, thank you. I do hope that you will all take the opportunity to visit the Ajwa Bakery. And now, a welcome return Jennifer Thomas, Human Resources Manager for Trustwave. My name's Jennifer Thomas. I work for Trustwave UK and I am their HR Manager for the EMEA region. My biggest achievement this year is increasing the amount of books that I read. I currently read two books per month. What motivates me is my desire to be successful and to set an example for my children. Thank you, Jennifer. Our next employer is Anna Claudia Hernandez-Bins, Managing Director of Alebridge Consulting. Hi everyone, my name is Anna Hernandez and I am the Founder and Director of Alebridge Consulting. 
Alebrija Consulting is a consultancy for the hospitality industry where our ethos is to live, breathe and believe in hospitality by inspiring, encouraging and motivating people and businesses. Um, throughout this year, I think my biggest achievement has been to start my own company and take the leap and be my own boss. It is a hard leap and um, it is not an easy task, especially during these circumstances that we are now. However, uh, being able to choose the tasks or the businesses that I work with and the projects that I want to develop, it's very rewarding. So it has definitely been an achievement and the anniversary is coming up on the 20th of April. What motivates me the most is to be able to see a business or a person develop with your guidance. And sometimes all a business needs is a new perspective. And by my consultancy, I am able to give this to, to some, some new or pre-existing businesses. The reason why I chose the name of Alebrijes is because Alebrijes are fantastical creatures in the Mexican folklore that transform into the best version of themselves. So just like any business, it starts, develops and transforms into anything we want it to be. Thank you. Thank you, Anna Claudia. It's now my pleasure to welcome Colette Huckle. Colette is the Regional Managing Director of the Reed Job Site. Hi, my name's Colette Huckle. I'm Regional Director, London, for Reed Specialist Recruitment. So my biggest achievement over the last year, I had to dig deep for this one. I was trying to think of something um, you know, some kind of um, extra special thing that I've done. However, what I realised was probably my greatest achievement in this past year has probably been surviving um, the many hats that I've had to wear. Um, so probably like a lot of other people, um, I found myself in the last year having to work from home. Well, when you work in recruitment, most of us are um, extroverts. We get our energy from people. Um, you know, we work in sales environments and we enjoy being office based and around people, and going out and meeting clients, going to colleges, um, you know, supporting candidates. And I found myself in a situation where suddenly I'm just working from home and uh, 24 7 and having to wear the hat of a teacher with homeschooling with the children um, mother director counsellor at times you know it's been incredibly tough um, for the teams at, you know for everybody um, for candidates for clients um, the recruitment world's been a completely different place this last year friend partner um, so, yeah, I mean, that, that in itself, I think, is a great achievement. And, you know, whilst I was looking for, um, you know, some big thing that I'd done, I suddenly realised that actually that's an achievement. This last year, I've had to learn new skills and different ways of working, adjust routines. So, yeah, that's me. In terms of what motivates me, delivering a first class service um, and just doing a great job. And, you know, that's whether or not I'm training somebody. Um, if I train somebody, I want them to be great. Um, if I'm delivering a service to a client, I want it to be first class. I want, you know, if we were going to send a review afterwards, I'd want five stars. And validation is that people will come back to us, you know, that you're recognised for doing a great job. Lovely, thanks Colette. And now it's over to Ingrid Marini, Rooms Division Manager for the Mandrake Hotel. My name is Ingrid Moreni and I'm the Rooms Division Manager in a five-star lifestyle hotel in London called the Mandrake. Uh, my biggest achievement this year was to finally complete a revenue management and finance course, which I always wanted to do but I never found the time. And my motivation comes uh, from the staff so when you recruit someone without any experience but with the passion to do this job and you help them growing in the job and then you feel part of their success when they become manager themselves. 
It's now my pleasure to introduce Tamil Udin of EnviroTam. Over to you, Tamil. Hello, everyone. My name is Tamil Udin. I work for EnviroTam Limited. It's my own company. I'm the director of the company and I work as an environmental consultant in the demolition, groundworks and construction sector of the business. Um, and I provide environmental consultancy services um, and sustainability services to a wide range of contractors and clients in my field. Now, um, what is your biggest achievement over the, over the last year? So in my personal life, I'd say the biggest achievement for me was um, the birth of my little girl. So that was a personal achievement for me. In my professional career, I measure my achievements through the successful delivery of projects with my clients through award recognitions and project completion. For example, one of my clients' projects went on to achieve a huge sustainability rating and is considered one of the world's most sustainable office buildings. It's located in the city of London. It's called Bloomberg Square. Please feel free to have a Google search on it. It's located in the city of London, right in the heart, right next to Bank Station. Um, the facade of the building, just to give you some um, a little bit about things that we did, the facade of the building um, has some sort of bronze shields on it, so these blades, which can be opened up to cool the building with naturally flowing air to reduce a significant amount of energy consumption. There's a water treatment plant on the roof to allow for rainwater to be collected and, um, and treated um, to save over 25 million litres of water per annum. So that's a huge saving. Um, many more features have been included as part of the main construction works, which you can Google and look through. And if you have any queries, let me know. I can answer that for you. But again, just going back to the early days when we carried out the demolition phase, there was a lot of reuse of the materials, adopting the circular economy principles on site based, on site assisted um, to achieve certain milestones. Although the coronavirus has impacted the industry, um, the construction industry, it is still strong as ever. And, you know, over the last quarter, I've managed to work closely with a lot of my clients and we've managed to secure over 15 million pounds of the work. So that's that's quite positive. What motivates you? So working on um, high profile tender projects with my clients during the tender phase is quite a thrill as you're competing against other competitors. And your technical submission with a unique offering is what gets you over the line to then go on to winning the tender. So that thrill, the chasing the, the tender, looking at the different ways we can approach the job, looking at the different methodologies, how we can provide a unique offering to the client is, is, quite, is, is quite a thrill because you're looking at new and innovative technology as to how you can implement that as part of your proposal is quite unique in itself and it's not a straightforward thing for you to do because you should look into it. there's a lot of research that needs to be done to it so plus you're up against time as well because you know you've got to submit your tender within an allocated time frame so you're up against the clock as well the other thing is driving around london and looking at the final completion of projects to know that I've had a personal input into the development is somewhat satisfying feeling a sense of achievement through it i mean i've over the last 10 and a half years I've been involved in the industry, I've covered about 180 different projects in and around London. So to be part of that development is, is quite achieving for myself. And lastly, just working on high profile projects such as the renovation works at the Buckingham Palace, where I'm involved with a client of mine, is motivating as you get to see the inner dynamics of that institution, I suppose. And to know that you've left a mark on a landmark is truly uplifting. May I introduce another local business owner, Andrew John of Cabba Heating. Hi, my name is Andrew. Um, I run a company called Cabba Heating, uh, which specialises in obviously heating, plumbing, uh, renewable energies. Uh, we do installations, repairs, servicing. What motivates me is basically, it's just helping people really, just, um, uh, getting people out of situations you know um, which can be quite stressful for customers um, so that w that's what probably motivates me going to work obviously money is a motivation the biggest ch achievement over the last year I would say has to be you know 
uh, the con- you know, we've uh, managed to tie down a couple of contracts uh, installing renewable energies, heat pumps for a couple of big um, energy suppliers around the southeast of England. That's basically who we are and what we do. Thank you. As Kashka said, this video is all about our students and our employer partners coming together. So it is now time to hear from our students and get some answers to just some of the questions that they have asked. So I've had a great question from Jana. How can I make myself more marketable to employers? So we get asked these questions a lot. So first of all, if an employer is looking at your online profile, you want to make sure that it's looking relevant, current. Um, so if you're on LinkedIn or social media, then you need to ensure that um, your profiles are appropriate if somebody was to look you up. Uh, if you're on LinkedIn, it's great to get some recent recommendations of your work um, or testimonials um, from people that you know, you've either worked alongside or worked for or delivered a service for. That's really powerful. You need to find your standout. So what makes you stand out? If somebody was reading your CV, what would be your standout? So a credit controller, for example, a credit controller might collect debt and they might collect debt within 30 days. So what? The standout in that situation might be that you're a credit controller that reduced the ledger from 65 days bad debt down to 28 days bad debt. That immediately tells the person reading the CV, if that's the role that you're applying for, that you could do that for them too. That's a standout. You don't have to have all of the skills for every job that you're applying for. You just bit need to prove that you are willing to learn. So, for example, if you're not very good on Excel, previously you've put yourself on an Excel course and now you can do pivots and macros and tables, then put that on your CV or ask put that in the interview question. Explain to people that you're willing to learn. It demonstrates that when you haven't had the skills previously, you are willing to go out and get them. Don't be afraid to let your personality shine through. That's really important. People at the end of the day buy from people. You know, they, they want to see you. If they're going to employ you. They're going to be employing you and your brand. So let that personality shine through. Don't be afraid to talk about your interests or what you're passionate about or what's important to you. Finally, whether it's a telephone interview or at an interview, make sure you don't leave anything to chance. Ask that question at the end. How did I come across today? Is there anything I haven't answered? Is there anything else that you would like to know more about me? Just make sure that when you leave that room, you know you've done everything you can to try and secure that job. OK, Elzira asked me how long did it take for you to start your own business? What were the challenges you faced? Well, so many challenges and it took, uh, as I mentioned before, it took me one year to start my own business. The idea was a long time before that we have to start our own business. There are so many difficulties, so many problems we face, like first of all the finance. Uh, we have no idea how much finance we need to start the business. Then when we, we plan on this one, uh, then we have another things to do, like uh, you have to get the permission from the council. So in that sense, uh, council help us a lot uh, through the phone calls, through the emails. But at the end of the day, you need to know one thing. All the hardships will come to an end when you open your own business. And then the new life start with your new hardships that you have to survive with the business. Difficult time, but you will come out of that one. So we have received the question from Yvonne Divila. Her question is, what advice would you give me in becoming a manager in the future? Being a manager is not easy and not everyone that becomes a manager knows how to lead. So my advice would firstly be to develop step by step in hospitality and not in a rush. There are many different sectors within the industry, so I would recommend exploring a few of these sectors first before finding your path and finding where you're good at. Be unafraid to try different things and when working in the industry, us to be cross-trained. 
because this is how and where you will get to experience different departments. There are certain characteristics to each position and you'll be only able to identify these by trying them first. So, for example, being in the reception team will be a completely different experience to being part of the events team or the sales and marketing team or the restaurant team. However, all of these are important in a company and they are sectors of the hospitality industry. So, for example, I started my career in hospitality first in bars and restaurants. Then I moved to boutique hotels. Um, I found my love for hotels. And then finally, I discovered members clubs, which is another sector that has pretty much all other encompassed within. So they have restaurants, bars and hotels. However, now having had that rounded experience and exploring several types of venue, I am able to provide advice to businesses with a more complete and overall view via my consultancy. So I would say whatever path or sector you choose within the hospitality industry before becoming a manager, I would recommend to absolutely fall in love with every single job that you do and to truly exude happiness in everything that you do. Happiness is contagious and in doing so, you will be passing your positive energies to your colleagues and your customers, which will naturally make them to gravitate towards you, which is one of the characteristics of a manager or a strong leader. With your attitude and positive energy, you will make everyone feel good, which is the sole purpose of hospitality. So when you become a manager, everyone will look up to you naturally because of your position. So your team will expect a fair treatment. They will expect your time and for you to listen to them. They will expect guidance and direction. And most importantly, you will have their career and their development and growth in your hands. So you will need to be completely self-assured, lead by example every day and be able to make decisions while also knowing how to work in a team, listen and take care of others and listen to their opinions, take those into consideration and still being the driver of action. As I said, it's not an easy task. But once you become a manager, the reward makes it all worth it. There is nothing better than seeing someone in your team or within your team learn, grow and develop whilst knowing that you were one of the key elements to their development. I really hope that answers your question and the best of luck in your hospitality career and hopefully becoming a manager one day. Bye, thank you. One of the questions our students have asked me to speak to you about is, what do you think has changed in the last year or so in the um, business? I think the, the major thing is um, social media and the way people find out about your business and ordering and delivery is now right. a big thing as well. Um, Special occasions. Yeah, yeah. So nearly all my orders now uh, through Facebook or uh, a lot more common now people pop into the shop now I've got the shop obviously right but the majority is on Facebook um, so would you say that what's the, the spread of business between Facebook and the shop yeah so now people know about the shop it's becoming more common for people just come in and order in the shop right. I would say still about 75% of the orders are through Facebook. Well, obviously, you've got a bigger market online, haven't you? People can see it, and you know, yeah. rather than you've got to work hard to uh, get your reputation, haven't you, with the yeah. shop? Yeah. And I think generally in the industry, I think just um, deliveries now as well. Deliveries are big, yes. I mean, look at, look at Deliveroo, look at McDonald's. 
You're not on delivery yet, then, B. Not yet, but we we have talked about it. To look into good. It. Yeah. Oh, that's brilliant. Beth, thank you very much indeed for sharing that with us this morning. The question that I have from Alice, thank you for your question, is what would be a reasonable salary range to expect if I entered this field? So for a HR role, your first salary would be anything between 18 and £30,000 per year. And there are a couple of variables that determine why that salary range is so wide. So firstly, it depends on your experience and your qualifications. If you have worked in a HR role before or have some experience of anything in the HR uh, area, you may be able to command a slightly larger salary. And if you have some qualifications or some professional credit from the CIPD, which is the Chartered Institute of Professional Development, that usually helps you to be able to command um, a higher salary and just demonstrate the value that you'd add to the business that you work for. The second thing is your ability to negotiate. Um, if you're able to position yourself in a good place and um, if the business really needs you, you may be able to um, negotiate a higher salary for yourself. And the third factor is knowing your worth. If you believe you are worth £30,000 and you really believe you're going to bring a good amount of value to a business, then I would encourage you to command exactly what you think you are worth. Um, if you believe it, then there isn't any reason why anybody else shouldn't. Thank you. Emilia asked me, uh, how many years experience should I have for management position? So I'm not sure about food and beverage, but I would say that to become a front office manager, it takes four to five years. Um, I always suggest to start as a receptionist or switchboard and uh, you learn how to face a guest and uh, you have the, the information about the entire hotel. And then to spend two years as a duty manager and you learn how to handle complaints and uh, you're involved in the operations of the entire hotel. Uh, I would suggest not to rush in a position in becoming a manager because a good manager is not just about the technical skills. There's a lot of people management behind. So you don't just need to be able to do like the payroll or the rota, but you need to be able to resolve conflicts inside your team in a positive way without taking sides. Uh, you need to be able to understand the skills of each of your team members so that you can delegate accordingly. You need to be able to understand the weaknesses of each of your team members so that you can do kind of a personalized training for them to improve. You need to be able to motivate them. And also when you do recruiting, for example, you need to understand what is missing in your team when someone leaves. So you don't recruit just the skills, you recruit the personality as well, so that you create a nice environment. And remember that we spend most of the day at work, so you want to create, and it's your responsibility, to create a nice environment for the people to come and work. When you feel that you know everything about the job, just ask your manager for feedback. This should be automatic, but if not, just ask for uh, feedback, for an appraiser, for a performance review, and for a development plan. So you have a plan and you can work together on your weakness. Um, this way you learn. You can ask to show you how to do the rota, you can ask to show how to do the payroll, and uh, ask as well to do cross-training. So. Uh, if you work at reception, you can ask to cross-train in housekeeping, in uh, concierge, in room service, and you have a better understanding of the hotel as a whole and a different point of view as well. And good luck. I understand um, this is a question, I think, from Pauline. Um, she, she's asking, um, you know, advice on basically setting up a company first thing I would definitely say would be you have to start with the costs of setting it up and making sure that you uh, understand that business that you're getting into. You definitely need to check on your competitors, uh, you need to do a lot of networking and if you can afford it you might have to do some advertising so you'll have to look into that as well. But 
it depends on what business you're going into. It's my sort of business, you, I would probably advise anything in like the construction side of things. I would advise someone to maybe um, not worry so much about advertising and things like that, which costs money. I would say build up your your customer base through your networks and eventually you know word of mouth is very strong in this sort of business it's probably the best form of, of advertising you can get uh, so I hope that helps um, and that's it and, and one of the questions that the student have asked us can you can you tell us what you enjoy most about your job what do you like about being self-employed so the independence uh, regarding especially uh, holidays uh, and uh, hours of work and then also the possibility to work in different places. Uh, in fact, uh, I'm working in medical clinic, private clinic and also in uh, one. Uh, and is it, is, it, is it a lucrative thing to be self-employed? You get paid more? Is it better, better pay? I think so. And uh, <laughs> I hope so, Sylvia. <laughs> and um, also, being self employed, the government uh, uh, gets you support as well. Good. And would you recommend it for our students? I can recommend enough to be self employed, uh, especially if you would like to manage better your hours, your time, be more independent and grow with your career. But also it's, uh, um, it's really good because you, you have to build up your uh, patient list in my case. Uh, so every day is uh, uh, something to, to get, to gain. And, Hello everyone, we've got a question here. What are the various different roles within your company? Of those roles, which ones would be most suitable for me as a newly qualified graduate? Now, depending on the qualification that you've got as a graduate, for me as an organisation, I am part of the Institute of Environmental Management and Assessment. As such, there are certain criteria that need to be met in order to gain the qualification. So, for example, having a degree in civil engineering, having a degree in environmental sciences, having a degree in geography, or even construction management, all adds to you getting that level of membership within the IEMA, the Institute of Environmental Management and Assessment, starting off at an affiliate level and working your way out. Now, traditionally, I work with junior environmental consultants who need to have certain skill sets in order to perform or carry out their duties on site. Now, a lot of the aspects it can be generally covered such as you know reporting basic data collection reviewing documentation etc but when it comes to more giving a technical advice and guidance to companies organizations project managers team leaders of sites in line with uk government law and other legislation and statutory requirements from local authority obviously those things you need to have certain training on which will give you a, a real boost if you've got that in the background so it really depends on the qualifications that you've got as, as i mentioned and as a recap environmental sciences geography civil engineering construction management are all sort of key aspects that i'd like to see someone have to, to ensure that the service that we deliver as an organization to our clients is fulfilled i hope that answers your question wow some really insightful answers there. Thank you, everyone. Staying with our students, some of them are now going to tell you just a bit about their current place of work. Irina uh, Laptesh. I am 32. I'm going to be 32 years. 
two years old. I'm working for Elio Catering Assistant, and yeah. um, the most uh, um, the most uh, honesty I have in my job when my manager is coming and uh, he say to me because he want to put myself up. I was working as a catering management assistant, sorry, and they put me after uh, six months. He put me catering management assistant, which was I'm very happy with my company. Excellent. So you got promoted? Yes, yeah? I've been promoted after six months. Oh, wow. So um, they've got a lot of opportunity then at your company? Uh, lot- they uh, have a opp- lot of opportunity, but because uh, that's why I used to, I start uh, going to your college so I can have my diploma in a couple of years, so I can apply for different jobs, which they're really good and in our company. So. I would just want to apply for the other jobs as well, which they make me very proud. Yeah. So Elio, essentially, Elio is giving you that leg up. They've helped you to get to the place that you need to get to, to further your career and to go into something else. Yeah. Maybe that's yes. even more challenging for you. Yes, they do. Yeah. And oh. I'm very proud with my company. I'm working with them from nine years. So uh, it's very good thing for me. And after six months, no one, they put you straight away up like this. But they like yeah. the way I'm working and the way I'm doing my job and the honesty I have in myself and the power yeah. when I do something, I enjoy it doing it. So that's why I think they like me, how I'm doing my job. So, yeah. You should be so proud of yourself. Well done. And uh, to get promoted. I am, this- but... Uh, not uh, that uh, powerful when I got a diploma and I want to be someone bigger than I am now I will say yes I'm very proud of myself yeah and that's that's great you have that fight within yourself that you want to do better you want more out of life which is amazing yes definitely I want some more for my life and for my better future obviously because you know it's um to have a job these days is not easy anyway so yeah but I'm very proud of myself and uh, with my company I'm working from. So, yeah. I think you've got the right attitude and I'm sure you're going to go very, very far. I can tell. Thanks so much. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for speaking to me today. Good morning. My name is uh, Alice Signat. I'm uh, working uh, with the company uh, in Dimension uh, UK. It's um, like a support worker. And uh, what wake up me up, you know, it's thinking I will go um, to job and um, uh, I don't know, I, I make you feel when when I'm going to work and then when you receive um, um, hugs for, for these boys, what I'm looking after them and then make you feel special make you make change your you think you think oh i'm doing well i'm i and make you feel go with with pleasure happy yeah. see the, the smile when when you do something special for them or you make them to laugh and i don't know it, it's hard to to explain in the words or what, what what i feel when i receive back for them that a lovely hug or, or when they ask you kiss or oh. I don't know it's, it's not easy to explain but yes I enjoy and yeah. uh, we the it's not every day different we have a routine but sometimes you know this make you when this acts this smiles this make you feel little isn't it it's the little yeah. thing that build up and give you that ultimate job satisfaction at the end yeah. of the day. Oh, I'm going again. <laughs> you know, you don't feel like, oh, oh my God, I need to go back and work. Yeah. Or, sure. No. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Of course. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That's, yeah. really, that's really amazing. I think everyone wants that, you know, when they go into work, they want to feel like, you know, I want to jump out of bed to go here in the morning and... You know, every day it might not be different, but every day is special. And, you know, you really get some sort of job satisfaction at the end of the day. Um, just by, like in your case, just helping these boys, you know, helping them, supporting them and showing them love and affection and care. I think that's that's amazing. 
it's, um, it's make you feel you you are doing something and you do with love yeah. and, you, and you give love and and then you receive back when you receive back and that you know uh, it's that feeling i don't know it's it's, it's, you know, probably it's for another people. yeah you know this job probably for another people they were thinking oh no but you know you have some satisfaction when 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 you think oh I, i'm doing well my job and every time you try to do your best and and yeah and when you receive all this back, I think yes, I, I'm I'm doing I'm do I'm I'm doing someone happy, you know. I change you change their days. It's not yeah. always the same. Yeah, you know if mm. the it's, I think for your um your line of work, what you do as support worker, I don't think everyone can do that. I think it takes someone really special to do a job like that. Someone that has patience, perseverance. Someone that's yeah. really it you know um, and likes to look after people and likes to care for people I think that takes someone very special to do that so yeah, it's true you need to have a lot of patience yeah. and then you know to understand them and yeah and special you know give love to them it's it's and smile and then when they smile and it's it's <laughs> you it changes your day <laughs> yeah that's amazing really mm. Great answer there. Thank you so much for that. So my name is Gabriela. I'm 30 years old and I work for the co-op for like the last one and a half years. Um, I really enjoy my job. It's nice to, I have a nice team as well. Um, the most challenging thing about my job is like, um, there are two parts of it. Working with customers sometimes is nice, but sometimes it's really challenging because they all have like different things going on in their life and they come and like get angry with us, like, why you don't have that product? I like it. We don't have it. Yeah. It's gonna come in later or something. Um, but sometimes we get to like know really nice customers that they even buy us like chocolate and stuff or lunch sometimes. They offer us like, yeah, it's really nice. Um and the other part the challenging part is the team as well even though i love my colleagues sometimes it's challenging because we all have good days and bad days and sometimes yeah. um i feel that i'm working more than i should and the other one is just like you know we're like wandering around the shop and like doing like little things not doing enough mm -hmm. um, but i don't let these things affect me <laughs> I just get over really quick and I don't um, I don't keep grudging against people like against my customers or against my colleagues so it makes me like okay it happened let's just get over with it and yeah life is going on tomorrow is a new day yeah and um, the best thing about working in uh, retail is like I get to help people like sometimes they have a bad day or they cannot see the they're shopping around like they're looking for a certain item that they cannot find it and I'm like I'm going to show you where it is or I give them um, advice like they want to buy something and we have similar product in offer and I'm like you know you can have this one mm -hmm. it is cheaper you get more um, product and stuff like that or offers we have like um, freezer deals like you get things for like five pounds a lot of things and they're like oh I, I didn't know you have that well now you know <laughs> I, I usually show them the offers yeah and um yeah it's um uh, it's nice to like know different customers and get to know them and sometimes they they uh, talk to us and tell them tell us like the, the, the issue they're going through especially these times and th it makes them feel better because they just get the weight off their chest. Yeah. Um, yeah. And I think that's nice. And especially like, I feel like it contributes to your day and it makes every day a bit different, you know, yeah. because meeting someone new every day with a new story to tell you. Yeah. Um, and yeah, like I said, it makes it quite exciting and um, not so dismal, you know, and every day is the same. So I think in that sense, it can actually make your day maybe go a little bit quicker. Yes, actually it is. When you um, get to know different people and they talk to you, yeah, 
whether and that, there are other times where you have like customers that are really in a rush they don't want to talk they don't even say hello they just ask you for the things they want and they just go no. or you get like uh, rude people which i don't like but it, it is happening uh, especially lately with all these situations like wearing a face mask and keeping your distance wait your turn at the door they don't do that so sometimes you have to be really um not rude but you have to tell them what yeah. yeah you have to be straight like you can't we only get can allow six people at a time in the shop if i have six i can't let you in you have to wait until somebody's going so you can come in sometimes they don't understand that and it is really challenging because if you get a few of them in one shift then it's adding up Mm. And I, at some point, I feel like I'm snapping. That's it. I can't take any more. <laughs> I'm trying not to be rude and like be calm and like re- like not relaxed, but like um, let things flow, not like building up on me. Uh, it, that that's the challenging part. I yeah, I think that's fair enough. I I feel like um, you know, in retail, we I feel like naturally sometimes we we think people in retail like robots, you know, and. Yeah. You know they don't have any like this, but it really isn't the case you know it's very important to respect everyone and to understand that everyone you know sometimes might not be having the best day you know and be yeah uh, and co- also conscious of that as well so of course that can be challenging sometimes when you know people aren't being you know so polite or you've got a customer that's you know being a little bit argumentative but like yeah. About earlier about letting go of grudges and not taking things into another day you know I think that's really important and I feel like you learn that over time and like you said before you've been in this industry now for quite a while yeah. so like that's a skill that you've built up over time exactly. being able to let you, things are, go, you know yeah let things go don't get affected by things like is that they're happening because things happen anyway yeah and I don't think that only in retail I mean ev- everywhere everywhere like every workplace has different uh, issues going on and like um, you don't have to let things affect you that's it what is really yeah. I mean I'm a bit disappointed with everything that's happening because um, even if retail has never stopped working in this coronavirus time yeah never so we yeah. never had one day off saying, okay, you stay at home today, shop is closing. No way, that didn't happen. And I don't think we are appreciated at the level we should be. Because people are like, oh, but that's your job. Yeah, that's my job and I'm doing it. I'm happy to do it. But please just be a bit more understanding with me as well, because it hasn't been easy at all to work through all this time. Yeah. Cool. You know? And like we, like um, NHS, for example, they had their jobs. We didn't. We didn't because we are not a priority, mm. you know. Even if we meet different people every day, we don't get to meet like the same people every day. We get different customers every day, and the risk is really high. Yeah. But they not we we're not as important as like um. Uh, schools like teachers uh, the medical staff and stuff like that yes and, and it's really frustrating like why wouldn't we come because we are frontline as well of course and you you made a really good point just now about how in retail you guys didn't have although you're working from home and it's not technically a break from working but you're safer aren't you? you're in your home you're safer when you're working from home so you guys didn't even get that kind of like um no. <laughs> you know being able to work in the safety of your home retail is front line you know yeah. it's working in the shops it's working face to face with customers exactly. and there's no like going around that you know no i think that you just highlighted another challenge there coronavirus i would it's say the challenge in itself for retail i think is the biggest challenge lately yeah because i don't know how <laughs> but i did i didn't had the virus yet oh good <laughs> I, I don't know how neither me or my family we've been really lucky with that but i don't know how we've done it because my husband works as a driver 
and well he doesn't have as much contact with like people anyway because he's only delivering things in um, um, Pret-a-Manger in London but they do it at night when there are no customers or no uh, staff so they have the key they open put the stuff in the, and go okay. so that helped him not to have contact with like different people but me I have contact with like different customers every day so I, I think I've been lucky, but I, I took care as well. I've been really careful with like washing my hands, wearing a mask, uh, sanitizing my hands every 10 minutes. I don't know, sometimes I do it so often that my hands go really dry. But mm. I'm happy that I stayed safe as much as I could. Good, good. That's good to hear. Yeah. Okay. I think that answers the questions that I had for you today. And really great answers, by the way. Really Thank thorough. You. Thank you so much for that, Gabriela. My name is Claudio Corruga. I work from Bermudez Park Company Limited. And my workplace is nice, good teamwork, fun. And all the time support each other. Brilliant. And um, why why do you think you chose those three words? Because when one of the colleague she have struggled, everyone support him, help him, and nice. We are like a small family. That's nice. And it's not some. Someone live live in the back, mm -hmm. and the fun because all the time we laugh, we enjoy what we do with the between us with the customers. Yeah, that's really good. So it's a nice place to get up in the morning and go. You know, that's really important. I think in the place of work, that's really good. Thank you so much for your time today, Claudio. Uh, my name is Nazi Hussein. Uh, I work for Nelson College London in the Ilford campus. Uh, I have been with them since 2017 uh, as an employee. Um, and I have also studied with Nelson College since from 2014. The question that you've asked, I think is an amazing question because from 2014 to up until I've worked with them, in 2017, uh, there's been a dramatic change, um, all to do with staffing, management, mm -hmm. um, uh, all to do with uh, professionalism. They have come a long, long way. Um, and since um, 2017, up until now, I've also seen other changes to do with also there's been KEC. The website has changed dramatically. Um, yeah. and there's so many things and opportunities for students. Because I work for them now, I'm not just saying because I work for them, but they have come a long way. And I think in a few years' time, that you wouldn't be able to tell the difference between LMU and Nelson College. I, I believe that their direction is quite good, and they're heading yeah. in the right direction towards um, uh, uh, trying to be on the same level as a top university or, or a good university at least. Um, um, and they're proud to be part of LMU as well. So I think they will meet. And Ellen, you will be also proud of them, of how far they have come also. So, yeah, I'm proud of working with them. And they've also done really well in a short period of time. Yeah. Uh, even mm -hmm. in a, not, it's not that they've been open for decades. Mm -hmm. um, so in a short period of time, they've come a long way. So it's, and, and I'm proud to be working with them. And I think not only by um, their reports, obviously, but... Yeah engagement um you know the alumni they, they, they've got going um, um and for a small institute they're doing quite what big institutes would do the larger yeah. institute, they have an alumni they have the KEC they have field trips they do uh, they do student orientated um uh, field trips whether they're extracurriculum or not extracurriculum they're doing mm -hmm. something for the students all the time um and yeah. I think a good part for students to also give them a good name um yeah. uh, well and, and students come and enjoy it and we're not only just getting the students that are coming back to education from a really long time i've noticed the last couple of semesters we've had students that are a lot younger 
And they've started the master's program recently as well. So again, another huge achievement, you know. Exactly. So I feel like it's just, I mean, it's, it's all the growth. Exactly. I mean, I mean, when I first started, the only option I had was hospitality and H&D. The only two options I had was H&D up to that point, uh, business mm-hmm. and hospitality there was no top up there was no other option there um obviously by the time i finished luckily the top up were, um, i think it came a year after i'd finished so i still had to do my top up in a different institute uh, no no right. in a, the same year that we finished our hnd which was still but at the beginning of hnd there was no um uh mention of the planning to or not planning to it came a little bit later but mm-hmm. by the time we finished in that two year period they had it all set up and started and we were, had the opportunity to do our top up there. I did it in a different institute, but all my other colleagues, uh, um, uh, students, peers, did it in Nelson College, which was quite nice. Yeah. And then, it, what, it only took them a couple of more years and they started the master program. So, which is really, she's really, really progressive. And not mm. only do they have, they have FDA now and they have hospitality top up. There's so, choice, isn't there? There's a lot of choice now for students, which yeah. is always yeah it's better so who says it's going to stop there who says it's going to end at just hospitality they might add more modules or more subjects onto it which would be really really nice that would broaden yeah, I think a lot more. there's a lot of routes they can take now you know they've made this first you know the i'd say the hardest step and now I feel like it would just flow from there thank you so much nazi i really do appreciate you giving up some time today my name is Anka Claudia Lupu. I'm 34 years old. I'm working for Wilson James in Heathrow Airport in Terminal 5. Uh, I'm doing customer service. Um, I really enjoy my job doing uh, the best thing in the airport, I think, helping passengers, helping people. Uh, that gives me a good sense of uh, my job, enjoying my job. Is the thing that I'm helping people every day. Every day I hear new stories, I meet new people, and yeah. I really, really like it. I enjoy doing that. I I imagine you um, talk to a lot of different people from around the world. You meet a lot of different people with, you know, crazy stories, I imagine. It must be quite every interesting. Every day, new stories, new people. <laughs> Uh, some good, some bad, some sad. I've always um, wanted to know what it's like to work in an airport. It must be really crazy and manic and everyone running around. And yeah, it's, it's very interesting. Every day is different, I can imagine. Exactly. Every day is different. And I think that's why I I, I stay with, uh, with this company for so long. I have nearly 10 years with them. Wow. wow. So, that's impressive. I really enjoy it and the yeah. the people that I'm working with I think that's the main thing from Wilson James that keep, keeps me there. I think if you have a good team that's exactly. like that, that makes or breaks a job if you have a good team around you a very supportive team a very empathetic team a team that you can rely on as well I think it makes the job so much more easier exactly. and you know yeah exactly. more enjoyable as yeah, the team, uh, that team from there is the second family. <laughs> it's yeah. a, the yeah. nice. family. It's like that. That's all I need from you today, Ansa. Um, and brilliant answer, by the way. Really thorough. Well done. Thank you. My name is Emilia Brezano. I'm working in Cafe Concerto like a head chef in the food and beverage sector. And I'm follow my general manager because he's, he's very kind of us. He's uh, always helping like a uh, more than team, like a friend. When uh, is uh, something wrong uh, or something uh, is um, coming uh, wrong outside, he came in the kitchen and he explained to us how we need to improve our uh, service to customer be happy and satisfied. That's really good. So he gives you constructive criticism. Yeah. Yes. It's always yes. very constructive. That's really yes. good. I think that's amazing reasons. And um, he sounds like an amazing manager as well. So that's yeah, great. yeah, it is. Yeah. yeah. That's really great yeah. to hear. 
Um, is that is that a route that you want to go down? Is that something that you want to become in the future manager? Yes, it is one uh, reason to be a general manager. Yeah, because I like so to work in front of the house and not in the back of the house. Yeah, more customer yeah. facing. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. So he's a great role model for you to look up to in that respect. Then. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Great, great. Thank you so much today for answering that question for us. Interesting stuff. Now, let's explore just some of the things that KEC does for you all. Hi, my name is Varuni. I am part of the KEC team. Online learning has rapidly emerged. We all had to develop new skills and understanding to ensure effective working and learning. Our nano learning videos help you do just that. The technical tips and tricks in two to three minutes of short, sharp, manageable nuggets of information enhance your online learning experience. These media rich videos are posted on NCL and KEC YouTube channels. Splitting windows screen for multitasking. Smart look up the built in search tool. Search with Control F the Windows hotkeys, exploring the cloud storage. Those are just a few concepts we have covered in Nano Learning Moments. To see all the videos, visit and subscribe to NCL and KEC YouTube channels. The knowledge is out there. Be a part of the efficient learning culture. Thanks so much for that, Varuni. The Career Advisory Service is an excellent way for you to invest in your future. The CAS provides one-to-one -one tailored career advice from a trained career advisor and occurs on a weekly basis. The career advisor will work alongside you to help you become more employable and more job ready. The CAS has taken a short break for the Easter period, but will be resuming back on the 30th of April, 2021. We have six slots available per day. So if you want to sign up, please do let me know. You can find my contact details on the screen now. For current CAS students, we will be notifying you to book onto your next sessions nearer the time. Thank you for now. And now it's over to Chris. Hi guys, Chris Davis here. For those of you who don't already know me, <laughs> I'm part of the KEC team at Nelson College. and I've been helping to prepare the most exciting initiative of the year. Yes, it's called Nelson College Career Hub, your very own online student career and employability platform available 24 seven through your computer and soon to be available as an app on your phone. It will provide you with all career preparation that is very much needed to succeed in today's job market connecting you to millions of employers and job applicants. We can elevate your CV, review job applications, help you with interviews and let you access thousands of online videos to help you in your future. A one stop shop. It's now available on your computer and soon to be on your app. A very exciting very exciting project product. Now also, I'd like to give you a big shout out for my online videos of cooking, cooking with Chris Davies. Have a look on YouTube, cooking with Chris Davies, some of the great videos, great fun, easy to follow, like and subscribe. Thanks very much, guys. Bye. Hello, my name is Mohammed Swan. I am the Design and Media Officer for KEC. At KEC, we work on various graphic designs such as posters, publicity materials, publications. Um, I've got a couple of publications here. Um, this is Flavours of the World that we've recently published. The copies for the Flavours of the World are available from our KEC department. Last year, we published the Careers Planning Journal. We also do other materials such as pens and pencils, logos, leaflets, so on. We're also on social media. 
To keep up to date with all our developments, keep an eye on our social media channels, YouTube, Facebook and Instagram. Thank you. Thanks, Saban. That was great. Feel like I'm about to do a bit of a magic trick. But seriously, these books really are magic. These little mini guides that KEC writes and publishes for you have all sorts of different tips and hints on things from writing CVs and cover letters all the way through to writing meeting genders and a minutes. We're on the third series of these booklets now and they're all available for you to view on the KEC SharePoint drive. One of KEC's responsibilities is to get you employment ready. You've heard lots of opinions and ideas from the KEC team, from employers and indeed from our students within this video and also in some of the other work that KEC does. However, I'm sorry to say though that there isn't one magical solution that will guarantee you a job. There are, however, some things that I can promise you. The first of those is if you are invited for an interview, then the employer thinks that you are capable of doing the job. Nobody interviews people that they don't think will be able to do the job. Therefore, the most important thing for you to do at an interview is to stand out. Remember, at most interviews, all the candidates are likely to be asked the same questions which means that most of the answers from most of the candidates will all be similar. They will all talk about boosting profits, increasing motivation, instigating new practices and so forth. These will easily all blur together in the interviewer's recollections. So you have to think of a way to stand out. You have to say things that are memorable. I was recently given a great tip as a really good way of achieving this. When it comes to the section at the end of the interview, where you are asked if you have any questions, ask them something that has absolutely nothing to do with the job. Bear with me on this. This is a proven technique. The friend who gave me the tip had given the same tip to his partner. And guess what? She got the job that she was being interviewed for. So it really does work. So, what could you ask? How about something like, if you could travel to any destination in the world, where would it be? Or, if you've really done your research well, and found where your interviewer went to school, and that isn't difficult to do these days, then you could ask, oh, I see you went to Rutledge School. How was that as a place to learn? Those kind of questions will be truly memorable. Nobody else will have asked them. And as I said at the outset, no one technique will work for all. This one may not work in a very, very formal interview setting, for example. But remember, what the employer is looking for above all else is someone that stands out. Someone that they could work with. So it's up to you to make sure that someone is you. That takes us to the end of our employability forum. We hope you've enjoyed watching it as much as we've enjoyed making it. A huge thank you to all our guest speakers today for taking the time out to support our students and to our students who have contributed to the overall event, thank you. If we haven't answered your question today, the KC and the CAS are here for you. I think if this pandemic has taught us anything, it's to live life to the absolute fullest and to make the most of every opportunity that comes our way. Well, that's all from me. Have a great day and stay safe, everyone. Thank you very much. Take care.